Hi Faith Family, thanks for tuning in. Today's video is about taking our prayer lives to the next level. Now what does that mean? Well, years ago when Sonia and I first got married, we started to pray together every night, and we would just take turns. It wasn't a long prayer. But I found after a while that we were really just focusing our prayer times on ourselves. And that kind of makes sense. We were newlyweds. We wanted to focus on building our relationship up the right way and, and uh, really setting a good pattern for ourselves. Uh, but at the same time, we were trying to be very intentional about reaching out to our neighbors, first in the apartment complex where we lived when we first got married, and then after we moved into a house uh, to the neighbors who lived in the homes around us. Um, and I noticed, I really felt God showing me that we weren't praying for the people that lived around us. We would reach out to them, but we weren't really lifting them up to the Lord. So I felt like God was uh, telling me that we needed to turn the corner and take our prayer lives to the next level by interceding for those around us. Now, intercession or praying for other people is what I mean by taking our prayer lives to the next level. Think through the last few days, weeks, even months. How often have you prayed for people outside of your immediate family or immediate circle? How many times have you prayed for other people at church that you may not really feel close to, but you know they're part of your faith family? How many times have you prayed for people at your workplace or people even on the other side of the world? You may know of missionaries that our church supports or your church supports. You may know of people who are being persecuted even. Uh, or you just may know of situations, natural disasters, or this uh, coronavirus situation where people are affected. And God has given us opportunities as soon as we know about all these things to pray about these things. How do we know that this is something that God wants us to do? Well, it's because of the scope that Jesus really commissions his disciples to, to, to live with. Uh, at the end of Matthew 28, the Great Commission passage, he tells his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations. We're supposed to care about people all over the world. He said, baptize them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you, and lo, I will be with you to the end of the age. Uh, God's really wanting us to have this vision for the work that he's calling us to that is all-encompassing. And uh, he teaches the disciples to pray, you know, um, give us this day our daily bread. Sounds very self-focused, but when he says, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that we're praying for God's will be done, not just in our lives, my earth, my little corner of earth, but the entire world. Uh, there's an invitation there for us to really think about how it is that God wants to bring transformation, his gospel, to bear life uh, all throughout the world. And what my prayer is for us is that we would have larger hearts, a bigger vision, bigger eyes, and a more uh, expanded prayer life that really gets to those next levels. So one of the ways that I think about this is I think about what Jesus told his disciples in Acts 1.8. This is just before he ascends back into heaven and leaves the disciples there waiting for the Holy Spirit. So he tells them, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So taking that pattern, I turn this into just concentric circles, and I think through then how it is that if we're supposed to be his witnesses, just collectively his witnesses in these ways, then maybe we ought to be praying in these ways. So starting with the inner circle, I think about what it means to pray for my Jerusalem. Th this is my immediate circle of influence, the people that I see the most. And for me, that means my family, my wife, my children, my extended family. Uh, this can also include, uh, particularly if you're single, you don't have kids, the people that you spend the most time with, your best friends, uh, your peers, the ones that you run with. Uh, so praying for them on a regular basis is part of praying through our Jerusalem. If we expand the circle a little bit more to our Judea, this is the people that are our kin. And again, this can be your extended family network, but this also includes your spiritual kin, which is your church. So you pray for those people in your church, and really we want to be praying for everyone that God has placed in our faith family. Now as a ministry leader, there are a lot of people in my life that I feel like I'm called to pray for. So what I've done is I've taken those names and I've turned them into a prayer chart. I have the seven days of the week, and then I have one column for whom I pray for every day. That includes my family. But I just try to uh, set it up where there are different groups. Here, it's our church leader. Uh, Mondays are actually where I pray for other pastors and missionaries. And then I pray for our church leaders. I pray for the different life stage groups in our church to make sure I, I, I try to cover everybody throughout the course of the week. And then I also have on there people from other uh, you know, past stages of my life, from other cities that I lived in and other networks I've been involved in. And that really helps me just to stay on track and to be focused and to try to cover all the people that God has given to me to pray for. 
So you can consider doing like that. Um, you can start out small. My list is going to be longer because I'm a ministry leader. But your list could just be like uh, two to five, even ten people every day that you pray for on a regular basis. The ones that God has given to you uh, to pray for. Uh, expanding that a little bit more, then we go to Samaria. Now, who's in our Samaria? If you understand the relationship between the Jews and the Samaritans, then you understand that those may be people that are not related to you by blood, but maybe outside of your immediate circle that you still see and come in contact with. So these can be people in your workplace, people that you live in your community with, your other neighbors that you don't necessarily spend a lot of time with, people at your school, or other people just that God has placed nearby you that you can be praying for. And then expanding that finally to the last circle when we pray about the earth. We pray about missionaries. We pray about things that we hear in the news cycle, natural disasters. But we want to be praying on a regular basis for the salvation of all those in the world. Why? Because those are all people that God has on his heart. And so those are, those are people that God's inviting us to have on our hearts as well. So I want to encourage you to consider these models or these patterns as a way of expanding your prayer life and really taking your prayer life to the next level. May God continue to make us a people of prayer, leading us through his spirit, and may he bless us and bless you as you follow him. Thanks for tuning in.